Well, that's God's truth, Uncle Pumblechook. Ah, the boys are all in trouble to you. Who are you? My name. Where do you live? Where are your parents? On top of them. They're dead, sir. Who do you live with, then? My sister and her husband, Duke Archie, the blacksmith. Blacksmith, father? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're late, Joseph Gargery. You've got this all burned. Where's the... Aren't you the bright one? Aren't you the bright star? Listen to him. Where's Pip? I wish I knew. Now get that down in so I can do the dishes. You got any food? Don't lie to me, lad. I don't have anything. I'm starving to death. I could feed on your heart and your liver. No! I could suck out your bones. Please let me go and buy me some food. Get me a fall from that blacksmith of yours, too. Would you bring anyone back with you? Or tell anyone you see me? I'll rip you apart with my bare hands and I'll suck out your bones. Say you swear you love me. I swear! Say may God strike me down if I don't. May God strike me down if I don't. Let's come up now. See, he's a good boy. I don't get too hard on him, my dear. Out on him! Out on him! And then you're out on me, bringing him up the end. Where the hell you been, you young monkey? You tell me right now, or I'll knock yours and his legs together, and that's a promise. Oh, well, the boys are well in trouble to you. I've only been to the graveyard. The graveyard? You'd have been to the graveyard long ago if it weren't for me. Who brought you up the end? You did. And why did I do it? I should like to know. I'd never do it again. I'd more than the shore. I've never had this apron of mine off since the day you were born. That enough being married to a blacksmith. And him a garage Without being your mother. Oh, now. You keep out of it. You eat your food. I was told that a convict escaped last night. Probably poor fellows, probably somewhere out in the marshes. Oh, we probably freeze to death then, poor thing, which is what the likes of him deserve. Mm, ah, the soldiers will catch him soon enough. And his guns are always caught. Why do you think he'll set to prison? Oh, listen to him. Always with the questions, this one. Why this and why that? He was sent to prison for being a pernicious villain. People get sent to prison because they murder and they steal. And they always start off by asking too many questions. Steal me that too, lad. Huh. And villains are always caught and they always pay. Steal it! Why ain't you eating, Pip? You're not lean on, chap. Makes you big and strong. The trouble with Pip is he doesn't realise how lucky he is. <laughs> now, Pip. If you hadn't been born a little boy, if you'd been born, say, a pig, you wouldn't be sitting here tonight having supper with your elders and betters. No, no. You might ask what would be the, uh, your end result. I will tell you. You would have been butchered. And this very night, you probably would have been sitting here eating you up. <laughs> and we wouldn't take long about it.
Wow. Is it good? Yes. I'm glad. Give me that ball. This will warm you up, I bet. You must be crazy. You're a good lad. Coming all the way out here to save another human soul. Say, what are you going to be when you grow up? A blacksmith. A blacksmith, eh? Yep, a blacksmith, just like Joe. You like Joe? Oh, Joe's the best. Him, me and Ollie, we're all going to build things together. Strong things out of iron and steel. Who's Ollie? Mm -hmm. He's Joe's apprentice. Now I've got a home. Look at my sister's house. To my own house. Nearby out there. And I'll have a wife there. Oh yeah, who are you gonna marry? I don't know. There's a girl called Biddy. She might marry me if I ask her. What are you doing? Killer frogs. Well, I'm looking for Pip. <coughs> Let's go find him. We'll make him in. Holly! Holly, you can't! No! Come on, Biddy! Thank you, lady. Are you going now? Oh, better. I ain't hardly slept on these marshes. I tries to sleep with all I hear is a tramp, tramp, tramp of the soldiers' boots coming to get me. Even when my eyes shut, I can see their torches burning in the darkness. It's a terrible thing, dear. You know all about that. Me, sir? All children know what it's like to be afraid. Who's there? Show yourself! Get down. We'll find you, Magic. And we'll make you pay. No one escapes the law. You tell on me, did you? No, I swear I wouldn't. Run. But go! He's over here! Look! Good lord, is that my fault, Pip? I've been looking for that. Yes, I was so like... Well, practicing a being a blacksmith, eh? Right? Hey. What's the matter? You look dreadful down the notch. Nothing. Uh, Borlick and Biddy were looking for you earlier. Why don't you go find them? I don't feel like it. Well, how about you teach old Joe all their new letters you've been learning in school? It makes me ever so proud to see you do your letters.
drudge and slave and never get no peace from all their bored days. And I'd far rather make your life a bit easier by keeping quiet. Even if it means I'm a little uh, ill convinced myself. I do wish it was only me that gets it from her. And I hope you can overlook the shortcomings of the situation. Of course I can. Oh, you and me, Pip? Oh, we were the best of friends. We won't let it get us down, will we? This is thrilling news, Uncle Popplechook. Yes, I know. Oh, what a lucky little boy. He don't deserve your kindness. Oh, you see, Miss Havisham said to me, did I know a little boy that you'd come over to her house and play? <laughs> and of course I know a little boy. And so I said to her, I said, uh, you might consider young Pip because he would be the perfect little boy to come over to your house and play. Ooh, is her house very big? Yeah, it's huge. After all, Miss Havisham is incredibly wealthy. Ooh, perhaps it's a lead to stop it. Well, unless the boy lets us down. Maybe she might give him some money. Or property. She might even set him up in business. Mm, and every time he goes there, perhaps he will come home with some gifts. I will share those gifts of Uncle Pumble Chuck. Hey, there'll be gifts for you, and there'll be gifts for me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen up the pair of you. <coughs> I've got some important news for him. Miss Addison has invited you to go down to her house first thing in the morning to play. Uh, Miss Havisham uptown? Do you know the Miss Havisham downtown? <laughs> play at what? You play at what and she tells you what. And you don't give her no trouble. And you don't start off by asking too many questions. You go and you play. And you mark my words if you don't look out to summit. Well, I don't look at you, Pip. <sighs> Those are his best clothes. Well, get him washed and cleaned. He'll be ready in five minutes, Uncle Pumblechook. Uh, I thought you said it was going tomorrow. Is it not possible, Mr. Go Joseph Gargery? But Mr. Pumblechook, being the perfect gentleman and all as considerate of this family, has offered to take Pip to his house tonight and take him to Miss Evershams bright and early in the morning. I mean, I ask you, Joseph. Is it not possible? Come on. And what's that? Ah, uh, that's the letter T. Dreadful handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes, yes. Now I know how to make a young man's mind very sharp. Pip, what is six times eight? <laughs> Sleep well? Oh, yes. Very good. Now, you have to read this on the way to Miss Havisham's. We don't want to be late. So, what is seven times nine? Sixty-three. Mm -hmm. A plus uh, eight. Seventy-two. A plus nine. Eighty-one. Plus ten. Ninety-one. Ah, oh, we are here. Uh, this is the house? Yes, what's the matter? It's not at all what I expected. Oh, what did you expect? Something grey. Good, well, no. But it's very big, isn't it? But look, the paint's coming off the walls. And the iron on the windows is rusty. I thought that you oh. said that she was... Here, here, here. I'm afraid there's a devil in you. Do not. You should be grateful to those who have looked after you and those who have brought you up. Oh. Now, wipe your mouth. Stand up straight. Please remember, this could lead to something that you may have been the best that you can for this. Now, let's just knock on the door. <laughs> I'm a very good friend of this habitude, of course. What name? Ah, oh, this is Pip and I'm <coughs> Mr. Pumble Trump. This is Pip, is it? All right, Pip, come in. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and I'm Mr. Pumble Trump. I'm sure Miss Havisham wants to see me. Oh, but she doesn't. Goodbye. <laughs> you told old Pumble Trump, look, 
I don't care to have a conversation with you, boy. This way. But, but what's your name? I told you. I don't care to have a conversation with the likes of you. My name is Estella. What do you mean the likes of me? I mean the likes of you. Give me your hand. It's dirty and rough, just as I thought. So, I don't care to have a conversation with you. Here we are, go in. Uh, Mr. Stella! What? Are you afraid? Why is the house all lit by candles? Because Miss Havisham can't bear the sunlight. Well, that clock's one, it says 20 minutes to nine. All the clocks here stand at 20 to nine. They've stopped. Why doesn't she stop them? Is it Stella? Who is it? Pip, ma'am. Pip? Just a bunch of nephew, ma'am, come to play. Ah, Pip, come near, Bob, come close. You're not afraid of a woman who has never seen the sun since the day you were born? Do you know what I touch here? Yes, ma'am. What do I touch? Your heart. It is broken. I am tired. I want diversion and I have done with men and women. I have some sick fancies and I've got a sick fancy that I like to see some play. So, play. <laughs> Are you sullen? Are you obstinate? I told humble joy. I can't play. And why is that? You should complain of me I'll get in trouble with my sister. So I'll do it for you if I could. But? So new here. Oh, new to you. Old and familiar to me. You met Estella, I believe? Yes. Did you think her very beautiful? Yes, ma'am. Well, then perhaps you will play with her. Call her in, please. Estella. A louder voice. Estella. Come here, Estella. Now, Pip, doesn't this jewel look pretty on her? And isn't her hair beautiful? She is my pride and joy. Estella, play cards with that boy. With that boy? He's a common labouring boy. That's true, but tell me, why not break his heart? What's that? Look at his ugly clothes. Good girl. He looks like he works on a farm. Well, one day he's to become a blacksmith. Oh, how perfect. So he needs to work in filth all his life, is he? All right. I'll go get some cards. We are not free to follow our own devices, you, you and I. Well, Estella has made it clear what she thinks of you. But tell me, what do you think of her? You've already told me you think she's very pretty. I think she's very proud. Yes, she is. And insulting. <laughs> Even though. She could be the girl, she might be the girl to fall in love with, isn't she? Perhaps you are falling in love with her already. I'd, I'd like to go home now. Love her, be. Love her, love her, love her. When shall we have you back? Let me see. Today is... I know nothing of the days of the week. I know nothing of the months of the year. Come back after six days. Oh yes, you will come back again and again, my pride and joy. What wonderful practice for you. Describe her house. Was there any food? What did Miss Havisham wear? Did you have a good time? With a boy. We all ate cake from gold plates and we drank wine too from great big gold goblets. And Miss Hepsham sat in a black velvet carriage right in the middle of the room. And Miss Estella, that's her niece, I think, handed in a cake and wine at the carriage window. And then I got up into the velvet carriage to eat and drink too because Miss Hepsham told me to. Was there anyone else?
else there? Uh, four dogs. Oh, big or small? Immense, sir, and they fought for veal cutlets laid out on a silver platter. Oh, yeah. Well, I never. A black velvet carriage? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, yes, she often sits in a black belt of cabbage. I mean, you share our little friends, you know, and, uh, and of course I have eaten from one of those gold plates. Uh. It is my birthday today, Pip. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thou well, brought me around the room. What? Come here. Now, walk me slower. Where's Stella? Will we play cards today? Ah, miss her already. Although she is so proud and insulting. Yes, well, the boy has been there for weeks now, and do they still play with it? Does he still play with the same team? Yes, apparently. They, they play while uh, he and Estella play together, whilst Miss Abisha watches on in the Oh, what do they play with? Oh, they play with flags. Uh -huh. Yeah. Apparently, he wears a blue one and she a red one. Ah, oh, that Miss Havisham fascinating creature. Oh, you don't bite my words. I bet she's going to do something for him. Pip! You play with those flags and you mark my words if this doesn't amount to something. Perhaps you'll give him one of them dogs. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that is over there, Pip? Where those cobwebs are? I can't see, ma'am. It is a grey cape, a bridal cape. My, it and I have worn away together. One day they shall lay me dead upon the bride's table and it shall complete the curse upon him. Upon who? <coughs> shall we go for my wedding, my birthday guest in? My relatives come to visit me once a year. They want my money. Isn't that greedy, Pip? You may enter. Walk me back to my chair. Slower. <laughs> well, you must all know this boy is a particular friend of mine, but... But what? He's not a relation. No, not yet. What do you mean, not yet? <coughs> Surely he's not here for Estella. So, maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. How well you have been passion. No, I do not. I am yellow skin and bone. She's certainly not expected to look well. Poor dear soul. The very idea of saying she looks well. She suffers terribly with her health. Don't you pay any attention to anything that she says? She does not look well. She is yellow skin and bone. She is yellow skin and bone. And how are you? I'm well, thank you. I, I, I'm not well. I wake every night worrying about our dear Miss Havisham and her declining health. We all think Miss Havisham. Not just you, yeah, it's what we do. Oh, the silence. Thank you for your visit. It's been most enjoyable. You may go now. We will have the money. No? But I have thought of it. Can you believe this? Shh, don't say anything. Goodbye, dear. Dear Miss Hansham. Take care, darling. I'm tired, Pip. Go and play in the garden. Estella will find you there. Estella! Hello. Who are you? Who are you? I've been playing with Miss Havisham. She said I could walk in her garden. Did she now? What are you doing here? Do you want to buy? All right. I ought to give you a good reason, though. There!
Do you still think me very proud? Yes. Well, perhaps not that proud. Perhaps you There, you coarse little monster. What do you think of me now? You're going to cry? I'll never cry. Oh, that's not true. You've already cried over me, haven't you? You may kiss me if you like. You must have enjoyed that. Getting to kiss a girl like me. Now, how is Miss Hamsham today? How are their dogs? Oh, I always wanted a dog myself, but your sister, oh bless her up, she ain't a dog lover. Then I don't argue with her because your sister is a mastermind. A mastermind! There aren't any dogs, Joe. What? There aren't any dogs. There isn't a black girl that carries their aren't gold plates. There isn't wine. There's nothing. I made it all up. I lied. No dogs. No. A puppy? No, I made it all up. I lied. Hey, come back here. You can't go about lying. I'm coarse and common and dirty. Why shouldn't I lie? You're what? What's got in you? Do you know who we are, Joe? We're the poor. We're not good enough to eat. Um, we're not good enough to eat off gold plates or to drink wine. We're not good enough for the likes of them. Well, then the likes of them ain't seen clearly. Now, look at all the letters you can draw. I bet they don't know half as many as you do. Estella knows all of them, I'm sure. Ah, uh, so there's an Estella. She laughs at me, mocks me for my manners, manners that I learned from you. Well, then it sounds to me like Miss Estella's the one with bad manners. Uh, don't you think? Wish I'd been born a gentleman, that's all. There's one thing you may be sure of. Lies is lies. However they come, they shouldn't come. And as for being a gentleman, old chap, there's one thing you do well to remember. Gentlemen, don't lie. Am I? You've been coming here for nearly a year. Are you to be a blacksmith soon? Well, not if I keep coming here. My sister says Joe has to wait until you're ready to part with me. And that maybe you'll do something. Maybe what? Nothing. Oh, I am ready to part with you. What's the matter? Surely you won't miss me or this old dark house. It is Estella you shall miss, am I right? But will Estella miss you? Why should I miss a blacksmith boy? Have a boy, You mean I'm not to come here anymore? I'm to be a blacksmith? Yeah. Where's that? No, no one ever told me I was 
forth and come, and I probably wouldn't mind it. But now that I know, all I want to be is a gentleman. And then maybe a Stella. So I'm sorry, you must get so bored that you and me go on about Stella. Well, I... <laughs> she was just like a star baby. And her hair was not like yours. It was terribly sleek. And her skin. Ugh. I hate me hands. Every day I'll, I spent hours cleaning them every night. By seven o'clock in the morning, they're just the same. Dirty hands. Blacksmith hands. Do you want to do something tonight? Like what? There's a dance. I thought we might be able to go. I want to read this tonight. You, you said me to go back to the library soon. Oh, very nice. Bears me sweat away like a pig in there's you. Taking a walk with your girly friend. She ain't my girlfriend. We were just talking. <coughs> but she wants to be your girly friend, doesn't she? What's the matter? She's not good enough for you. You're being rude. Stop wasting your time with him, Bitty. Who thinks he's much too much of a gentleman to have a girly friend as common as you? However, if I'm afraid about to have a girly friend, there's a dance tonight, Bitty. Come with me. I can't. Why not? I'm just very tired today. That's all. No, no I get it. You think you're too good for old Orlick. Think you can do better than me. Perhaps she just doesn't like you. My name is James. I'm a lawyer from London and I'm looking for a Mr. Pip. Neither one of you is better than me. Yeah, Pip, there's uh, someone at the forge to see you. Uh, come on in. Uh, Orlick, you can go and have lunch now. I'll be taking a two hour one as well. <laughs> Watch your back, Pip. So I may I'll learn you. You're busy. I'll be waiting for you. Sooner or later, you'll come call him. Stay away from me. He scared me. Uh, well, I'll take you to the dance. You will? Mm. Yeah. He's uh, a lawyer from London. I am here because I have been asked by an individual who wishes to remain anonymous to convey a message to Pip. What message? The message is that you have great expectations. This individual wishes to be your benefactor. You are to be removed from here and taken to London immediately. There you shall be brought up as a gentleman and come into a handsome property. London? <laughs> what likes Pip? Joseph Gardner, will you object in cancelling Pip's apprenticeship? No, sir. Do you want any money for the boy? Money? Yes. With all due respect, Mr. Jaggers, you don't have enough money to pay what Pip is worth to me. That's as may be, but I have a certain amount of money that may be useful to you. Do you want any money in exchange for Pip or not? No, sure. Then in that case, the rest of this discussion is none of your business. <laughs> you must listen carefully, Pip. This individual wishes to be your bank, and there are two conditions. First, you must always keep the name of Pip. Do you not object to that? No, sir. Second, so, then um, you are forbidden to inquire about the identity of your benefactor. If you have any suspicions, then you are to keep them to yourself. The name of your benefactor will remain secret until they reveal it directly to you. You have no objection to this? No, sir. Then the matter is settled, and we are all agreed. You must come to London as soon as possible, let's say a week. But before then, you must buy some new clothes. And they should not be working clothes. <coughs> Here are 25 guineas. You look amazed, Mr. Garvey. I am. Are you sure you don't want any money for the boy? This is your last chance? Stop badgering me! Stop fighting me in my own thoughts! Pip is free to do as he wants. I don't own him, and I want nothing for him except his happiness. So, let him be. So, be quiet. Sorry. The sooner you leave here, Pip, and it's unpleasant to influence the better. <laughs> you will be living with a young man called Herbert Pocket, who will help educate you, of course. You'll go wrong somehow, but that is no fault of mine. I shall send you the address. Good day. Sorry. 
go to bed gentle one day. Just like you always wanted. Well, and this guy told me she's a thing. Well, her face would be a sight. And then we can go for the darts and then and tell Biddy what about it. Well, I can't go to the darts. I have to find Estella. Estella? But you ain't seen her in years. This is old Miss Abisham. Don't you see? Pip, you're not supposed to guess at who it is. Pip! You're going to run with the king. You're coming to watch the things we last met. That's right. So, you have the benefit of not knowing. That's right. And I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> Interesting. You're looking for Estella. Where is she? She's gone abroad. She's being educated. She's admired by everyone who sees her. Do you feel that you have lost her? She is far out of your reach. But she isn't. I'm to be a gentleman now. This is your room, that's my room, um, that's the kitchen, and this is where we'll eat. 
I thought you made me hungry, so I took the liberty of preparing you some dinner. I bought rather a lot of fruit. I since I bought since you're from the country, you probably rather really like fruit. That's right, isn't it? Oh, sorry, you must be starving. Let's dig in. Mr. Pocket, call me Herbert, old chap. Uh, Herbert, because I am from the country and was brought up to be a gent, uh, brought up to be a blacksmith, I can't help but fear that my table manners aren't very good. So. I do hope that you'll correct me whenever you see me go wrong. All right, old chap. No problem. <laughs> so, when we last met, oh. I suppose you hadn't come into your good fortune yet. That's right. I heard it happened a lot recently. I was right on the lookout for good fortune back then. Miss Havisham had sent for me to come on a trial visit to see if I would be suitable to take her house. But she didn't like me. No idea why. I am so sorry to hear it. Ah, well, bad taste. What can you do? If I had come out as successful, perhaps I should have been provided for. Perhaps I should have even been betrothed to a sell-off. You're really Pip, old chap, it's not the custom for a gentleman to talk with his mouth full of food. For a proper girl from all the good support, the only girl the world can Do you see? Do you really think that the boy she chose to play with was meant for a sell-off? Perhaps. Lucky like escape for me, I should say. Gee, that is Stella. She's hard and haughty, and capricious to the last degree. And she's been brought up by Miss Havisham to wreak revenge on all the male sex. Break their hearts. Break their hearts, my pride and joy. What do you mean, wreak revenge? Oh, I'm Miss Havisham's cousin. I know all about her. She grew up in that house, very rich and spoiled. Her parents left her a fortune, which, as you know, she still has. That's, how, that's why her relations come round every year, hoping she'll leave them something, but I doubt she will. <clears throat> She's awfully mean. You look wonderful, Miss Havisham. <laughs> Happy birthday, Miss Havisham. You may go now. <laughs> Pip, old chap, it's not the custom for a gentleman to put a knife in his mouth. You know, just in case it doesn't come. So sorry. Do, carry on. So, Miss Hudson was left with a tremendous fortune, and eventually there appeared upon the scene a young man who began to court her. He said he loved her, and she fell desperately in love with him, but the young man was a swindler, after her money and nothing more. The young man proposed, and she accepted. She turned a great deal of her money over to him. Then, on the day of her wedding, she received a letter. The young man wasn't coming and he stole her money. She received the letter at 20 minutes to 9 precisely. She was already wearing her wedding dress. The cake had been delivered. The guests were waiting. Miss Hampshire read the letter. Then she stopped all the clocks. I know nothing of the days of the week. I know nothing of the months of the year. And from that day to this, she has never left the house, never seen the sunlight. A few years later, she adopted this fellow when she was just a baby. It was your man, Jaggers, that brought the child to her. Jaggers, I wish to raise the child. Find me an orphan. Boy or girl, man? Oh, girl. Definitely a girl. And Miss Havisham raised the little girl, as I say, to wreak revenge on all the horses. Poor Stella. So was Stella is adopted, you see. <laughs> Would just like me. Except she acts like a snob when who even knows who her parents were. Herbert, uh, if you and I are to be friends, there's something you must know. I love Estella. Oh dear. <laughs> I love her against reason. I love her against peace, against promise, against hope, against happiness. Certainly against happiness. Try to think of Miss Havisham and think of Estella's upbringing. Why? I'd try and stop loving her if I were you. Why? If Miss Avisham chose me to pay there, then maybe she wants us to marry. I still will only make you miserable. Well, I don't care. I have to be with her. I shall be spending the next few years learning how to be a, how to dress, how to speak, just like a gentleman. The kind of gentleman that could marry a seller.
Congratulations, sir. You are now a member of the Honorable Society of Finches. We die every Saturday. A fine choice. A beautiful addition to an English gentleman's home. You are standing beyond your means, Pip. Try and do better. To the Honorable Society of the Finches. If you have now read the complete works of William Shakespeare, it is time for you to read the novels of Fielding, the novels of Thackeray, and of Balzac and Lobey. Smith, and you a gentleman. 
It is a most miserable thing to be ashamed of home. Ah, oh, well, at least Estelle still wants to see you. And I shall go see you tomorrow. And I shall stay with Joe just like he suggested. Oh, if it isn't young Pig. Uh, not young anymore, my good woman. Let me take your bag, sir. Didn't think we'd see you back in these parts. Well, I'm only staying for one night. I am meeting back in London. Here to see Joe, are you? Or is it Miss Biddy? I'm here to see Miss Estella and Miss Haddish. People around here are still talking about your good fortune. You've become a legend just about. Don't tell anyone about my visit now, there's a good woman. I don't want poor Joe disappointed that I had no time to see him. Yes, sir. Can't be helped. Prepare my room. I shall be back for supper. Absolutely. Is a Mr. Pip. Thought you was a landing man. Well, what are you doing here? Work for Miss Heversham now. Don't I? Do you indeed? I do. Indeed. Well, get out of my way. I'm expected inside. Come in, Pip. So, you kissed my hand as though I was a queen. How proper you've become. But you know, for all your expensive clothes, you're still only a common boy. Do you find her much changed, Pip? Before, I thought you were the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. <laughs> now, if I'm not mistaken, you are the most beautiful woman in all the world. But you used to think her proud. Insulting. Well, what a fool I must have been. I was only just a boy. Oh, I'm sure you're quite right that I was most disagreeable. Do you think Pip is changed? Very much. I assure you, Estella, that varnish only better shows the original grain of the wood. You can never disguise it. I'm going to London soon, Pip. You are? Miss Hampshire here asks that you show me the town a little. Oh. I've never been there, you know. It would be an honour. <laughs> no more marshes, no more grazing cattle. Instead, you'll have a theatre, art galleries, concerts and more. I can't wait. So you're tired of me. Don't you miss me? It is you who is sending me there. It's part of your plan. You won't miss me. I can see it in your eyes. They are hard and cold. You? Reproach me for being cold? You? You're not supposed to be cold to me. Me who adopted you and lavished years of tenderness on you. When Chagos brought you to me, you had nothing. Look at what I've done for you. You have been very good to me and I owe you everything. Yes, I am grateful. What else do you want? Love. And you have it. No, I do not. Who taught me to be hard? Who praised me when I learned my lesson? You were not supposed to be hard to me, Estella. Not to me. You are being unreasonable. I have never forgotten your wrongs and their causes. I've never been unfaithful to you nor your schooling, and I have never shown any weakness that I can charge myself with. I must be taken, as I have been made. No. Kiss the boy goodbye. <laughs> I do look forward to seeing you in London. Pip, Pip, come to me. I will tell you what real love is. It is blind devotion, unquestioning self-humiliation, utter submission, trust and belief. You must give up your whole heart and soul to the smiter. As I did, I adopted her to be loved. I bred her and educated her to be loved. I developed her into what she is now, that she might be loved. So if she favors you, if she wounds you, if she tears your heart to pieces, you must love her, love her, love her.
Welcome to London. I'm going to Richmond. Where's that? Well, that's West London, a very fine neighbourhood. You are to take me there. We are not free to follow our own devices, you and I. Yes, Estella. I'm going to live with a lady in Richmond who has the power, or says she does, of taking me about and introducing me to people, or showing me to people. What people? To men. I have all of Miss Havisham's jewels with me. She insists that I wear them every day. You see, men like me, jewels. I'm sure they do. I'm sure you'll enjoy all the admiration you'll receive. Miss Havisham will enjoy it. I am to write to her constantly and give her reports of all of my conquests. And how many men are you planning on to conquer? Pick. What is it? You must know that I have no heart. Everybody has a heart. Oh, I have a heart to be shot in or stabbed in, but that is all. I don't believe Well, you should believe me. I'm trying to warn you. You will take me to many places and we shall do many things. But I warn you, I have no softness in my heart. No sympathy. I was bred that way.
Give me a minute, there's no one else here, is there? Who are you? What do you want? How do you recognise me, young kid? Well, how do you know my name? How could I forget the name of the lad who saved my life all those years ago in the graveyard? You had to know me, my lad. I never forgot. You stay away from me. Don't, don't touch me. It's cold and it's, it's wet out there. Can I have a drink? If you have come to thank me for what I did as a child, it is not necessary. You must understand, sir, that I do not wish to renew our chance acquaintance. Oh, I understand, sir. Did they release you from jail? Send me to jail, my lad. Send me to Australia. Off by sail. Far, far away. Settle a new world. Well, I hope you've done well for yourself. I've done wonderfully well, my lad. But the other brothers who went out with me, they don't know too. But none of them done as well as I. I'm famous for it, lad. Well, what are you doing back then? <laughs> Business? Business? Yes. I shouldn't be here at all. I can tell you that. They sent me out there for life. Coming back here means death for me. Death by hanging. <laughs> then why are you back then? Well, to see you, my lad. Now you was going to be a blacksmith, weren't you? Things changed. I, I have a benefactor now. Really? Who's that then? Afraid I can't. Talk about some of the, uh, the best of luck to you. I wish you the best of luck. Tell me, uh, the lawyer who did this business for you, did his name begin with a, a J? And was the next letter an A? And the next, perhaps, a J? Yes, yes, his name was Jaggers. I know it was. Well, how do you know? Pip! Pip, my lad! It's me! I'm your benefactor! You? Did you know I did? No. I got a gift, Pip, for speculating. I made more money in Australia than I could have ever stolen in England. <laughs> Every penny's been for you. Every day I've seen your face in front of me. I never spent hardly nothing on myself. I live rough so you could live smooth. And my mother saw me laugh and said, There goes a poor ignorant convict. I thought to my son, Well, what are they now? Back in England, I got my very own English gentleman. And look at you! Look what Maggie's made! This lad, I got more, plenty more, where that come from, and it's all for you. All for you. Uh, you, you must be tired. Where will you sleep tonight? Why? Why, here, my lad. I, I've been seen, washed, and tossed for months just trying to get here. Uh, yes. Yes, of course, you must, you must stay with me in my room. But how long do you think you'll be staying? How long? How long? Why, Pip? Well, I'm here for good. I can't take any of his money. All I know is a murderer. Do you really think so? All this time, I thought it was Miss Havisham. But no, she doesn't contend with me for Estella at all. I shall go find Estella myself. Tell her how I really feel. Let her make up her own mind. I, I think she went to Miss Havisham's after the ball. Thank you. Wait, here. Pip, please don't leave me here alone with... Oh! <laughs> Good morning, young fella. Can you tell me where you keep your bread? Oh, the bread. The bread. It's this way. <clears throat> what wind blows you here, please? I came to see Estella. Ah, she'll be here presently. Walk me about. 
about the room like the outline? No. You refuse. I have found out who my benefactor is. It is not a fortunate discovery. It is not likely to enrich me in reputation, station, fortune, anything. I had, of course, thought that my patron was you. Did you? You knew that. You let me think it. It amused you. Yes. Was that kind? Oh, who am I, for God's sake, to be kind? Uh, Pip, you really must stop following me about Stella, I love you. You know I love you. I have loved you long and dearly. I had, of course, thought that this having to flag for us to marry, and that is why I have not told you directly until now, but I do. If I warned you, you warned him what? Stella, I loved you from the very first moment I saw you in this house. My fortunes have changed, Stella. I've got no money. I'm ignorant of what may come to me very soon. How poor I shall be, or where I go, but still, I love you. She is marrying Benki Drummond. She mustn't. Mustn't? Stella, if you won't marry me, I understand. You don't love me. That is my misfortune. But please, don't throw yourself away on a group. Marry someone worthy of you. Oh, don't worry, Pip. I shall make you terribly unhappy. Well, I don't care about Drummond. I don't care if he's unhappy or not. But I do care about you, and you will be unhappy. Pip, this will pass. You will forget about it. Yet you, you, you're part of my existence, part of myself. I see nothing, I hear nothing without thinking of you. You're part of every book I've ever read, every prospect I've ever seen. On the river, on the sails of ships, on the marshes, on the clouds. The light, the darkness, in the wind, in the wood, in the sea, in the streets. Forget you, I. Get out! Get out! Oh. No! You mean nothing to me. Oh, God forgive you. And God bless you. Oh. What have I done to him? What have I done? Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, stop saying that. All this time I thought of Miss Havisham. She doesn't intend for me for a seller at all. It's probably for the best, Pip. I've completely changed who I am. I've changed my family, have left my home. Stella's getting married, and my benefactor is a criminal, and soldiers want to hang you. For all my nose is a murderer. I can't take any more of his money. Oh, do stop saying that. He calls himself my father. I left the only father I knew back on the marshes, and he probably never wants to speak to me again. I've run up terrible debt. I don't know how I'll pay them back. You'll get a job like the rest of us. Oh, I'm an idiot. A visitor came last night who wanted to know whether we had anyone staying. Who was it? A stranger I didn't like all of us. He's in danger here. Yeah. You'll have to tell him to leave. It'll hurt his feelings. feelings. Not as much as being hanged. <laughs> we have to roam out on the river in secret. Row your boats, row your boats, take a row on the river. We mustn't get involved, Herbert. It will be dangerous. Of course I'll be involved, Pip. I'm your friend. We have to row him out to a ship on a ship down to Europe. From there he can travel home safely. Tell him you wish him to leave for his own safety. Oh. You have to leave. For your own safety. No! You have to! I'll be alright here. I'll change my name. Somebody I'll disguise myself. Somebody already knows you're here. Well, you must find me a wig. You said yourself if you were found you'd be hanged. I'll get into trouble too! Oh, old man, he just doesn't want to cause you any trouble. Not a moment's trouble, nor pain.
boy to England again, is it? Good boy! Shh! Sorry, son. I got a daughter too. Somewhere in England. Do you? If she's still alive, I do. Me and her mother, we didn't make such good parents. Not long after she was born, we both ended up in jail. Jaggers took the little girl. Said he knew a lady who wanted to bring up a daughter. My daughter was the prettiest baby you ever saw. I think of her often. Wonder what she's doing. Never know now. I only hope she turned out a lady, like my son turned out a gentleman. There's another boat following us. Keep quiet. You there! Stop going! We need to see who you have on board. Keep going. Oars. Stop going on the wall. Swing to your passenger. Oars. You have on board an old fellow by the name of Abel Matchwick. Stop. You'll get in trouble. But you'll be hanged. Give me the oar. Stop, I say. What happened? Magwitch has been taken. He's in prison and is badly hurt. Oh. How does an old con like that get to be friends with a gentleman like this? Who knows? <laughs> it's a strange world, isn't it? Yeah. I'm dying, aren't I? Yes. You don't have to stay. I want to. At least I shan't be hanged. And die here peaceful life with the one I love beside me. You've been so good to me. You were so good to me. Magwitch. Dear Magwitch, you had a child once. You were loved and lost. She lived and found powerful friends. She is a lady now, very beautiful. I love her. Oh Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. You look tired of me. Why are you holding me? I have very little time. My dear Pip, she is married now. I only meant to save her from misery like mine. You must believe me. At first, that's all I meant. I am. So if you knew my story... I do know your story. Oh, Pip. Pip, can you ever forgive me, can you? What can I do for you? Nothing. I don't want anything. Let me give you money. Do you want money? No. I want to give you some money. Please, get up. I don't want anything. You look after in spite of anything that you've said. I do forgive you. I have to. Because now I must ask so many to forgive me. There's Joe and Biddy. I'm going to go see them now, see if I can make any amends. Biddy? Who is Biddy? She is a girl I, I used to know. Yes. Yes, Biddy. <coughs> go and see her. Why, say it again, I forgive you. I forgive you. Oh, Miss Havisham, the candle, you're burning. I said go. Oh, the whole house will burn. Yes, let it burn. Oh. Let it all burn to dust. Wake up! Wake up! All it! Where is Miss Havish? Dead, isn't she? It's a half hour spurt down. Look at that. What are you doing? You always got an old early swag. Ever since you was a boy. You came between me and a young woman I liked, didn't you? When did I? 
What are you doing here? Visiting, remembering. Yes, me too. <laughs> How funny. I heard you moved east. Yes. Do you do well there? Well enough. I work hard. How is Grummel? Oh, he died. Riding accident. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. What? I must be going. Well, why? I don't know. I think now we can be left to your our own devices. Oh, do you? Yes. So you didn't forget me? Well, I told you. You're part of my existence, part of myself. I see nothing, I hear nothing without thinking of you. You're part of every book I ever read. You didn't forget it. I suppose I saw through, thought of you from time to time. Come, meet Joe and Biddy. No. Yes. I can't. 
you can come 